Good morning, everyone. I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land from where we broadcast today's service and where many of us gather. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians, the Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation. I'd like to pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging and pledge our ongoing commitment to reconciliation and justice for First Peoples and others in this land. Now, we have a new song today. How about I sing the first verse through with the band and then you join in the first verse and if we're going well, we'll keep going for the other verses. It goes like this. sadness upside down Take our tears and turn them round Touch us heal us, lift us up we fall down Turn our sadness upside down Everybody have a go at the first verse? Turn our sadness upside down Praise God here and to the ends of the earth. Let the whole world rejoice because of God's just and true judgments. Let us praise God's greatness wherever we go so that generation to generation will know that God guides us forever and ever. Let us pray. Lord God, King of the universe, we thank you for sending your Son, our Saviour, as a helpless and vulnerable baby, dependent on the love and care of flawed human beings. As we come to worship, may we make ourselves vulnerable, open to receive more of your power, mercy and love, so that we can share that with others when we are sent to serve you. Amen. Let's stand and sing together, our God, our help in ages past. Oh, uh-huh. 
Welcome everyone to worship. It is lovely to be back with you. Thank you uh, to all those who kept things ticking along well. Thanks to Duncan and Janet and the team last Sunday and thanks for everyone for looking out for each other as well as you always do. It is good to be back even though a couple of days ago when I got out of bed I could walk on the beach and have a swim and then... Uh, <laughs> and then enjoy a 25 degree day. It is good to be back here in the beautiful, um, beautiful Melbourne. Our, um, our prayer of confession is a responsive one today. Let us pray. If we've been so busy that we don't notice the needs of others or have resented those who do take time to be kind and generous or have disgraced our faith by becoming self-absorbed. Who is loving God and save us from ourselves. If we have been too proud to undertake humble tasks or too impatient to do tasks that have no immediate reward or too stubborn to seek the help of others, forgive us, Lord and save us from ourselves. If we've magnified small wrongs done to us or have allowed tiny difficulties to frustrate us or have been thick-skinned, inflexible or unteachable, forgive us. Lord, have mercy. Jesus Christ sent out his apostles to call us all to repentance. God has promised that all who turn to Christ for mercy will receive forgiveness for sin. For in our weakness, God's strength is sufficient. Sisters and brothers, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let's sing the hymn, stand and sing together, Amazing Grace.
let me tell you, <coughs> let me tell you a story. This is not my unpacked bag from coming back from Port Douglas. <laughs> In fact, I could, anyway, I could have reused it, but this is a story about a man who uh, was going to the beach and the man wanted to have a great day at the beach. So the man got his st stuff together, got his towel and then thought, just in case I need to do a little bit of computer work, <laughs> just hello, just started telling a story about a man who went to a beach and thought he'd better take his towel. And then he thought, you can come and sit here if you want to tell it while I tell the story. And then he thought, or oh, just in case I need to do some emails or check my emails, better take my computer as well. You know what, Charlie? This man who was going to the beach and wanted to have a good day, he packed all this stuff to go to the beach because he thought, what if I get a sore back while I'm at the beach? I'm going to need to... You want to see how that works? There's a little bit on your back if you've got a sore back. And just in case that doesn't work, I better take my heat blanket so that I can get some heat on my back if I get the sore back when I'm at the beach. And if that doesn't work, <laughs> my wife will be uh, so annoyed at me for bringing this. She thinks it's a terrible thing. This is a massager. You've got one of those, you plug it in, and it's actually called a Dr. Graham. <laughs> And you plug it in and when it's got electricity in it, it does a little nice rubbing on the sore spots on your body. So, so the man thought he'd better take that all just in case, just in case his back was sore when he was down at the beach. And then he also thought, oh, what if my laptop gets a bit mucky? So he, he, he thought he'd better take this to clean up the screen on his laptop. And then he thought... Oh, what if my T-shirts get a bit wet? I'd better take some spare T-shirts. So he took his spare T-shirts and then he thought, what if I see somebody really nice and I want to dress up and impress them? So I thought, I'd better take my tie and my coat. i better wear that, take that down to the beach as well. So he packed all that in there. Then he thought, oh... But what about if the wind comes in and it gets really cold during the day? But I still want to look... I better take my coat, this bigger coat. What do you think of this man? <laughs> Is he a bit silly? Is he a little bit silly? Well, this man, he was also thinking, 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 thought, what if I get sleepy and I just want to stay on the beach overnight and have a snooze? So I better take my dressing gown. So he took his dressing gown as well. And then he thought, what if I wake up in the morning and I want to go for a run? So he put his runners on his inner there as well. And then, what if I want to entertain some people? I better take my ukulele. And oh, what if I'm lying there and all those things on my bad back aren't working. I'll need my roller to sit down there and um, roll out the bad stuff. And then he thought, oh my goodness, down at the beach, what if I get bored and I want to entertain some people? Better take some fancy dress, <laughs> put on my robin suit. You know what happened to this man when he got to the beach? Put all his stuff on the sand next to his beach and he looked around and said, isn't this just beautiful here? And he went for a walk on the beach, had a little paddle and then went home again. 
with all the stuff that he didn't need to take. What do you need to take when you go to the beach? Take your bathers. <laughs> he actually forgot his bathers <laughs> after all of that. Bathers and towel and hat and sunscreen. And thongs as well. Did have some thongs in there. Oh, it's something to play with in the sand. That's right. <laughs> this man also thought about bringing some tools, but they were getting a bit heavy today. <laughs> Part of the point. Taking the garden spade. Yeah. And that is what this story is a little bit about, as well as having a bit of a laugh at someone who's um, getting a bit carried away. Our Bible stories today are, uh, are going to help us think about what are the most important things that we need in our lives every day. And a little bit of a reminder that sometimes all the extra stuff maybe is not so important and to remember the important things about loving your mum and your dad and knowing that God loves you and is with you, helping you all the time. And the word we use for that is God's grace, that God cares about us and, and helps us and um, that's the most important thing for us to take wherever we're going and helps us to be strong, whatever's happening. So we're having a, our song now, our song about being strong like a tree. Can you remember that one? Action, Charlie? The tree song. So let's sing the first two verses of the tree song. By the riverside One day as I walked along Straight as an arrow And pointing to the sky Growing tall and strong How do you grow so tall and strong? I said to the riverside tree This is a song that my tree friend sang I've got roots growing down to the water, I've got leaves growing up to the sunshine, and the fruit that I bear is a sign of life in me. I am chained on the hot summer sundown, I am blessed for the birds of the heaven, I'm becoming what the Lord of trees has been me. As a strong young tree I saw a tree in the winter time A snow lay on the ground Straight as an arrow and pointing to the sky And winter winds all around How do you know so tall and strong I said I've got 
So today's Bible readings, they invite us to reflect on some really heartfelt, deep stuff about strength and weakness, vulnerability, honesty, what really matters, and also the grace of God. So while I was reflecting on these things, my mind bounced around a number of moments and episodes in my life, some of which I I didn't actually want to revisit for the moment, Um, some which I did and it was good to go back to them, and um, some that were mainly about me and some that were mainly about other people. And for some reason I've chosen these two, just two moments to, to share with you that I think might evoke some things for, for all of us around these themes and connect to the readings today. My grace... Well, better have the readings first, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> there we go, that's a nice intro to the readings. So thanks, James, for coming up and uh, reading it for us. Our first reading this morning is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 to 10, and it's on page 230 of the Bibles and the pews if you want to follow along. I know a certain Christian man who 14 years ago was snatched up to the highest heaven. I don't know whether this actually happened or not or whether he had a vision. Only God knows. I repeat... I know that this man was snatched to paradise. Again, I do not know whether this has actually happened or whether it was a vision. Only God knows. And there he heard things which cannot be put into words, that human lips may not speak. So I will boast about this man, but I will not boast about myself, except the things that show how weak I am. If I wanted to boast... I would not be a fool because I'd be telling the truth. But I will not boast because I do not want any of you to have a higher opinion of me than you have as a result of what you've seen me do and heard me say. But to keep me from being puffed up with pride because of the many wonderful things that I saw, I was given a painful physical ailment which acts as Satan's messenger to beat me and keep me from being proud. Three times I prayed to the Lord about this and asked him to take it away. But his answer was, my grace is all you need, for my power is greatest when you are weak. I am most happy then to be proud of my weaknesses in order to feel the protection of Christ's power over me. I am content with weaknesses Insults, hardships, persecutions and difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 1 to 13, and on pages 52 to 53 of the Bibles and the pews if you want to read it there. Jesus left that place and went back to his hometown followed by his disciples. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many people were there, and when they heard him, they were all amazed. Where did he get all this, they asked. What wisdom is this that has been given him? How does he perform miracles? Isn't he the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon? Aren't his sisters living here? And so they rejected him. Jesus said to them, Prophets are respected everywhere except in the hometown and by their relatives and family. He was not able to perform any miracles there except that he placed his hands on a few sick people and healed them. He was greatly surprised because the people did not have faith. Then Jesus went to the villages around there teaching the people, He called the twelve disciples together and sent them out, two by two. He gave them authority over the evil spirits and ordered them, don't take anything with you on the trip except a walking stick, no bread, no beggar's bag, no money in your pockets. Wear sandals, but don't carry an extra shirt. He also told them, 
wherever you are welcomed, stay in the same house until you leave that place. If you come to a town where people do not welcome you or will not listen to you, leave it and shake the dust off their feet. That will be a warning to them. So they went out and preached that people should turn away from their sins. They drove out many demons and rubbed olive oil on many sick people and healed them. This is the word of the Lord. My grace is all you need. Traditionally translated as, my grace is sufficient for you. And the first time I really became aware of this reading, I was talking with a school teacher from, um, from Druin who had been diagnosed with alopecia, with hair loss, in his late 20s. He'd been losing clumps of hair and seemed like he was going to lose it all. And um, it might be hard to believe, but I still had a good head of hair at this stage myself, also in my late 20s. And so I was feeling for him because he was a very cool and popular Christian leader in the local region. He was an excellent musician and he had this powerful way of communicating with young people about following Jesus. And, um, and he knew it, as um, some musos sometimes easily get into that mode. But losing his hair wasn't part of the, the plan or the look, and it wasn't helpful to his cool, charismatic presentation of the gospel. Now, I will admit that I had been envious of his musical ability and his presence and his ability to communicate and engage with young people. And I'd been a little bit judgmental of his healthy ego in how good he was at all of that. But we were both in a, um, a local school teacher's um, prayer group and um, as he went through this um, losing his hair in fairly short space of time, I discovered how I grew in respect for him and in ability to relate with him as he shared his struggles with our group. He kept coming back to this promise from God, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is all you need for my power is greatest when you are weak. And so he just kept on doing what he was doing and his, his ministry changed a bit but from my perspective um, deepened and, and I was able to relate with him more. And I wrestled with that one. I didn't know why I was supposed to tell that story today. It didn't seem like a great example, but quite a good little side example of this question and with our own losses of things that mean a fair bit to us, hearing from God. There's all these things that we take and think are important to us, but my grace is all you need. Another memory for me, the, the second story that I wanted to share today was when I was doing chaplaincy training at Peter McCallum Cancer Clinic. And I met a lady whose body was very weak with cancer, but her mind and spirit were strong with a sense of God's grace and strength. She had struggled most of her life her husband had left her to bring up their four children on her own with a few resources. Two of the children had gone off the rails reasonably big time, um, including jail time. But they had pulled themselves together as this lady, Rosalie, was reaching the end of her life. And it was November when I first started the placement and she was the first person that I got to know in this role. 
and she was expected to die in the next few weeks. But her final wish and other things, other grateful, wise words that she said to me made a big impression on me. And, um, and I tried to express them in a song with music that said something of how it felt to me. It went like this. I'll take each day as it comes I'll thank God for everyone but if I can see Christmas with my family, that will satisfy me. I loved them when times were bad. I was always there. Love is the most important thing. I was always there. So I'll take each day as it comes I'll thank God for everyone But if I can see Christmas with my family That will satisfy me I wondered if they loved me Sometimes I felt used but love is the most important thing that sometimes gets abused. the thing that I have found so I'll take each day as it comes I'll thank God for everyone but if I can see Christmas with my family that will satisfy me She did make it to Christmas with <coughs> her family and they had a good gathering and, and she passed away a few weeks later. In peace, knowing what <coughs> was important in her life and in our lives. In our reading today from Corinthians, we see how St Paul, one of the early followers of Jesus in the Greek city church of Corinth, to know what Rosalie knew, that the most important thing in life is love. Not fancy spiritual experiences or impressive knowledge or wisdom or status or anything. And this became more urgent for Paul after he moved on from founding this church at Corinth because there were some people who moved in aspiring to replace his leadership in the church. And so they set out to undermine his status with the Corinthians and so they sort of portrayed him as relatively simple and unsophisticated and they compared to them as well as fairly weak spiritual role model and a fairly feeble leader. Ah, so poor old Paul. 
he felt like he had to defend his credentials so that the Corinthians wouldn't lose his message about love in action. But he didn't want to defend his credentials because the criteria for those that were being laid on him by these would-be replacement leaders, they weren't the important stuff. So Paul knew that he could speak in the lofty sort of Greek philosophical rhetoric of the day if he wanted to and he knew that he could indulge in ecstatic spiritual experiences and had done so but they weren't the main game and they could become a distraction in his words puffing you up with pride so that God's grace was squeezed out of the picture. And that's why we had that awkward start to the reading today. Paul doesn't want to boast about his strengths, but sort of has to in order to defend his teaching against those supposedly super spiritual people who are constantly having God-given visions and receiving God-given messages. But after that that sort of seemingly awkward bit read so beautifully dramatically by James, um, Paul then directly challenges the assumptions of those would-be leaders and then he offers us some of his most profound wisdom. He argues that our weaknesses, far from being something that we should conceal for the sake of the gospel, are actually things we can be quite open about because it's precisely at our weakest points that the power of God's love and mercy are most obviously at work. And so Paul goes as far as to say that he will boast in his weaknesses so that the power of Christ might be known in him. And then he does it. He goes on to tell the cryptic story of his attempts to overcome one of his weaknesses, the thorn in the flesh. He doesn't tell us what it is. He calls it the thorn in his flesh and people have speculated about what that could have been for 2,000 years since he wrote it. We'll probably never know. But whatever it was, the point of his story is that he repeatedly appealed to God to remove it, take away this thorn in my flesh. But God repeatedly said no and said, my grace is sufficient for you. Or in other words, you're better off relying on my grace than being so strong that you don't even seem to need my grace. And so Paul concludes with this um, incredible phrase, when I am weak, I am strong. And then in our Gospel reading today, Jesus requires vulnerability and dependence on God from his disciples so that they might be strong in their mission. He sends them out on a mission to go into villages and preach the good news, but they're to go in utter dependence. Their authority to do what they do is not their own, it's given to them by Jesus, and they're not allowed to take a money bag in case people think they're wandering magicians doing it for money. And take no provisions or even a second tunic to sleep under. They're to be reliant on the generosity and hospitality of others, to stay wherever hospitality is offered, not go looking for something better. And if they're rejected, humiliated, their only defence will be to brush the dust off their sandals as a testimony against the place and move on. He's teaching them that they are to be vulnerable, weak and dependent. So countercultural then and so countercultural now. 
So what are the challenges for us from today's reading? Today's very countercultural reason readings. I'd suggest attitude and faith. Can we flip our mindset? Can we frame things so that our weaknesses and vulnerabilities are opportunities? Opportunities to depend on God's grace and strength and wisdom. And can we take from those weaknesses, those things that we would rather not have, but there they are, we're stuck with it. Can we receive them as prompts to remember that what really matters in life is love in action? Can we do this as individuals and can we do it as a church? Declining in status and authority and power is not appealing for individuals or for our institutional church. But sometimes we need to let go in order to receive. So this time that we are going through, for some of us as individuals and for all of us as part of the institutional church, Can we see it as opportunity, possibility to come back to depending on God's grace? What's the good news in this for us? We can be real about who we are in all our strengths and our weaknesses all our virtues and our flaws. It is one of the lovely things about belonging to this congregation is that sense of knowing one another and honesty about who we are in all our strengths and our weaknesses and our dependence on God. And we can be honest and balanced about the state of the church, the institution and the local folk, because the power of God's love is always healing and reconciling and renewing in strength for the church and each one of God's children. God's grace is all we need. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we worship God with our offering, let's sing this song about depending on God's grace. Mm Jesus, help us all.
creating and eternal God whose grace is sufficient for us and whose power is made perfect in weakness. In our weakness and insufficiency, we offer our lives and the gifts of our living for the work of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Our prayers this morning will be in three parts. There will be a sung part, followed by a spoken part by me, followed by a period of silence. We'll follow that pattern three times and conclude with another sung part. The sung part will be a well-known tune. You're welcome to join in as you see fit. Let us pray. God of the universe, creator of all that we see, who dances with flowers and paints with rainbows, hallowed be your name. Lord, come to us, abide with us, kumbaya. Lord Jesus, who walked this earth, who knew our temptations and overcame them with your grace and wholeness and healing, who in your resurrection power bursts forth into our hearts, Come to us, abide with us, kumbaya. Holy Spirit of power who inspired the disciples, who empowers us all, in whom there is healing and grace and fire and wind, come to us, abide with us, kumbaya. Someone's crying, Lord, kumbaya. Someone's crying, Lord, kumbaya. crying Lord kumbaya oh Lord kumbaya Lord we bring before your healing presence all those who cry or grieve, who are in pain. We hold before your presence Lynn in her isolation in preparation for travel. Jean's relative Maureen and her family as Maureen is in palliative care. For Kath to aid in her recovery. For Merv and Betty and all those who care for her. For Sharon's mother, Joyce, and family. For Joy as she struggles in her pain, and Alan as he cares for her. For Sue's son-in-law, John, looking for work. For all those who cry out and need our healing, Lord, hear our prayer. We hold before you, Lord, the following members of our congregation. Mandy and Stuart Bowes, Dorothy and Bob Campbell, Lynn Christie, Joy and Alan Collard, 
Lyd Cowan, Beryl Dargaville, Lynn Davis. We hold before you, Lord, the people of the congregation of St Mark's Uniting Church, Mornington. We bring before you, Lord, all those who struggle with the COVID pandemic, this scourge of our times. May we be all healed of this, Lord, whether we're struggling with lockdowns, whether we're testing, vaccinating, caring for those who are, who are ill, or in places where the scourge is particularly prevalent, Indonesia, South Africa, and other places. Lord, bring us your healing, bring us your grace, bring us your presence. Someone's praying, Lord, whom by someone's praying, Lord, whom by someone's praying. Pray for countries at war, that their leaders may realise the futility of human power and the all-sufficient power of God, whose grace is sufficient for us all. We pray for those affected by natural disasters, such as the building collapses in Florida and mudslides in Japan. May your order be restored and your compassion rule. We pray for all those who struggle, those afflicted, those grieving lost ones, lost loved ones, and those who care for them. Lord, we pray for all of our leaders, all of whose decisions are difficult and which we say must wrestle, concerning every aspect of our shared lives. May they exercise their authority with wisdom and compassion and in your grace. We pray for those who are disabled, who struggled with the tasks of everyday living, that in your healing and grace, they will receive the help and encouragement they need. Lord, we pray for us all, those who are ill, those who are not whole, those who cannot understand, those who do not know your love and power, those who do not know your grace. Lord, may your grace be with us all. Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's sing our communion hymn around the table.
Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you our thanks and praise, O God, joy of all the earth. For your grace is sufficient for us and your strength is always there in our weakness. You created the heavens and the earth and all that live in them and gave yourself to us to be our guide forever. You gave your people great leaders like David to shepherd them in peace and righteousness. Your son Jesus came teaching with astounding wisdom and bringing freedom and healing at the touch of his hands. Like the prophets, he was not honoured in his own town and was crucified by his own nation, but you raised him from the dead displaying your perfect power in his weakness. Now he has entrusted us with his mission of casting out evil and proclaiming your steadfast love from the holy mountain to the ends of the earth. Therefore, with all the company of heaven and earth, we praise your holy name, singing together. Holy, 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 this table we are forever reminded of your love for us O God for here we remember that night when Jesus washed his disciples feet and sat down at a table to share the meal with them on that night the night of his betrayal he took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said
this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after saying, this is my life poured out for you and for everyone. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, O God, and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the life of Christ and that we may make that life visible through our faithful witness to the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The bread we break and the cup we take are a sharing in the life of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ was broken for you. May the cup of Christ keep you in eternal life. Our gracious God, we give you thanks for refreshing and renewing us in this meal with the life of Jesus, your Son, our Lord. Strengthened by his life, the food of eternal life, we go from here to be eager bearers of his word and willing followers of his way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we stand and sing together the summons.
Go now in peace and wherever people will hear you, proclaim the life-changing love of God. Do not fear your weakness, for when you are weakest, Christ's strength is known. Travel lightly, live simply and honour those who welcome the gospel. And may God be your protection and safe haven. May the power of Christ Jesus dwell in you and may the Holy Spirit be your guide forever. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.